how to use a design such as this as a brush stroke. Now this design was created in the previous video, so please check that out, how to create a contour design slash cloud slash warped design. Now warps are only in version two, Affinity Design version two. And key thing to do is to make certain it fits the entire screen. Now I've just got it over here in my assets. Great way of storing your designs, put them into an assets folder. Just over here in assets, you can find that in the window menu and assets and I've got assets there. Loads of different brushes can be stored away and just dragged in for future use. And the key thing is make certain it fits within the document. It's no good if it's over the edge, so don't push it over the edge. Now, of course, another thing you could do is create maybe multiple copies of it. Make a very complex brush. So you don't have to just use this. So you could turn around and say, oh, you know what? I want, hold down the alter option key and duplicate it and create a couple of designs. So you can create a very unique design like that. And it's all still live. So you can go to the layers panel, click here, and you've got the warp group. There's warp group there, and you can tweak. You can see the setting there for the twist. And again, this is version two. Now, if you don't want any of the warps, you don't have to, and you can use it with version one. And you've got the cloud there, and you can modify the settings for that as well. It's all live. So you've got your design there. Again, keep it within the document. Now, there's a few bits there which maybe might go over the edge. So I'm just gonna check, I don't think so. No, it looks all okay. Let's just move that away. I don't need the assets anymore. What you can then do is go to File and down to Export. And I want to export the entire lot. So the key thing is to make certain it's selected. At the moment, I've only selected one. So let's just go and select all of them. That's the key thing. Uh, just make certain they're all selected. And that one isn't typical. So just select them all. Very important. Otherwise, this will not work. So all selected, go to File and Export and then go to there, and it will take a few seconds to process. I wouldn't, su I would suggest not changing the size at this point. I'm gonna change the size, but do it afterwards. Because the next thing to do is this, selection only. I only want that design there. Don't want all this rest of this white area. I just want the selection only. And it'll take a few seconds to process. And I'm doing it in PNG. Now you'll notice there's a bit of a glitch here that should be okay. I don't think it's gone over the edge. But if it has, you'd obviously just push it in a bit. But it's PNG and now go and resize it. So I want it to be about a thousand by a thousand, that sort of size. A bit smaller. Don't want an enormous brush that's, uh, it's up to you, of course. Export. So you now can export it. So save as, and I'm saving it as a PNG format file. And I'm just gonna call it very originally brush one. Unless there is a brush one, of course, and then it will tell me. And of course you could create a folder of these as well. Or again, save this design to your assets. You can save the entire thing. But if you do that, you need to group them all. You need to group all these groups. I know that's pretty weird, but that's the way it works with assets. So now I've got that design. I'm just gonna remove this now. I don't want this anymore. So just delete that. It's left over a bit there. That's not there, but it just looks like it is. Now you can apply this brush, once you've brought it in, to say a shape. So I'm just gonna create a shape, just a very basic shape like that. Just a rectangle. Now go to the brushes panel and you can see I've got some earlier that I created and you can set up a category. Now I've got an Andrew One category. Of course, you will have different categories. You can create a new category this way. New textured image brush. So new tech, now there is an intensity brush. I don't really like that one. I don't often use it. Personally, I prefer the textured image brush, and that's what I'm gonna use here. So new textured image brush, select that, and then select file. Now always, the way, it's always tucked over the edge, so you can't see the word open. So I'm just gonna select that, and then open. And then it's just stored away. And if it's done right, you should see it here. So if I go now over this, and I just double click this, and you can see the design. You can see it's made up of those three groups. And they're still live, so I can always go back and change them, tweak them, modify them, if I'd kept them, of course. And you can change a brush width. 
Now you'll see the design is in grey, which is not great. You might not want it in grey. And also you've got size variation there. Now I'm not going to do anything with that, but please check out my videos on all the various size variants if you're using an art pattern pen. You've got a number of other options. You can also go, this one's always nice, instead of using stretch, and this is what it's doing, it's stretching it around the object, you've got the option of repeat. And there's a number of other options as well for corner. So you've got overlap and so on. So you can go through those, just try them out. Some work like that one, slightly better than the other one. And you can modify it. Of course, you can increase the size. Now, unfortunately, there's not any more options. It'd be nice if there were. Sadly, there's not, so close. And of course, you can duplicate this brush and create variations of this brush. So now with that, what you can do, you can go over here. You can turn around and say, oh, I don't want it that color. I want it, well, that's not so good. What you need to do is change the stroke. So you can change the stroke there. But you can see you've got the red in the center, the fill, and you've got the stroke set there. I must admit, quite often, I always go and change the fill when I mean to change the stroke. So go there, go for blue, and you can see by changing the stroke, and that's the key thing to remember, it's not the fill. Just change that, and you can see as you change it, you go around and you can see it goes all different colors there. Or go back up there, black, it will go to gray, and so on. You can run through it. So you've got your, but you might want what you had originally. You think, oh, I want the original color. Well, what you can do, click here. Simply just go here with the color, you've got option there, just click that. And now you can see the original colors. It's a pity there's no option just to do that anyway. Just say, always display it as is. Would be really nice, but unfortunately, that option does not seem to be available. And you can then obviously just increase the size. And of course, you can always duplicate it. So you can always save that one. So you've got that one there, 816, and tweak the other one. But what you can also do, luckily, is you can go here, vector brush tool, and then you can apply it. So I've got that one selected. You can see it's selected over here, and you can simply apply it. And of course, it's still using the repeat option. And you can see if I do that, it's just applied all over. You can create some really amazing designs. And also what you can create, if you go like that, create multiple shapes all over there, you might think, oh, you know what? That would be brilliant as a brush as well. You can just go and select the entire thing, save it as a new brush, and then of course use it in the brushes panel. Perfectly reasonable. But also what you can do, just go over here, double click, and you think, oh, I want stretch. So click there and change it, and you can see now you've got stretch, and you've got brush width, and you can change that. Maybe go full on there. Of course you can push it only so far. It is a pixel design. It's not a vector, unfortunately. Be nice if you could save as a vector, but it's not. And of course, what you can do, you can resize. So you've got, again, you've got to be careful you don't resize it too much. You can rotate it. Now it's stroke. So you can then, of course, hold down the ultra option key. Make sense you select there. And you can create other copies. And of course, you can modify the stroke, tweak the design. Now you go over here, node tool. And you can see it's just made up of nodes. And you can think, oh, let's just change it. And you can stretch that out there, select there. And you can see you can distort design to create all kinds of very colorful, unique designs as well. And of course, you can then use it with the warp feature and so on. Loads of other options are available to be able to use. Now, I suddenly thought, oh, maybe use it with a contour. I don't know what the result will be. Oh, that creates an interesting design. <laughs> yes, you can probably push that out. That does create very unusual design. That's a possible for another video, but you can see the effect of using contour. And again, you could probably go for another option there. No, nope, didn't seem to do anything. But I think that's a, a useful way of creating some very interesting, quirky designs using the contour tool along with this brush stroke as well. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much.